This week on What's Your Fantasy, we are going to be covering the top 10 tight ends in fantasy football. PPR, get ready. We locked and loaded right here on What's Your Fantasy. Hey, look. Ruin the dreams under pressure. Peachy be the one to bless ya. But don't test her. The queen reigns supreme. <laughs> you know what I mean? Add the boy Breezy Prince like a king. When the two come together in any weather, they form a bond, stay tight in any measure. So it's my pleasure. The number one team. Let the world know what's your fantasy. What's going on, fantasy football world? Welcome to What's Your Fantasy. It's your host, myself, The Wayne Breezy, Crystal Peachy B, and the place to be. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. Don't forget to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to the channel if this is your first time watching an episode, all right? So make sure you subscribe to the channel. This week, we are going to talk about the top 10 tight ends, all right? Top 10 tight ends via PPR. Uh, Peachy, who stands out? as the number one tight end just off the top of your head we're going to get into them but who stands out as that number one tight end to you travis kelsey travis kelsey really yeah. i'm not trying to be a hater but <laughs> dang I off mean, the top of my head travis kelsey travis kelsey all right so peachy said travis kelsey's the number one i'm gonna go with george kittle george kittle should be yeah. the number one fantasy tight end uh, but let's see what happens. We got our top 10 tight ends. Let's not waste any time and let's go ahead and get down to the get down, baby. Top 10 tight ends as we are ready to go. Oh, number 10 out of Dallas, former cowboy. Dallas, is his name Dallas Goddard? Yeah, it's Dallas Goddard. And he played for Dallas. <laughs> and now he's an eagle. Talk about Dallas Goddard, PG. Why is he a top 10 tight end? Why is he number 10? First of all, what is hilarious is a lot of Philly fans, they call him Philly Goddard because they can't stand the word Dallas. <laughs> that's a good one. That's that's but a bomb drop right there. That's, that's either a good way, bomb Philly Goddard, Dallas Goddard, this dude is sensational. And I know people are like, oh, my God, Philly has so many weapons. Okay, but he is one of those sure bets that you definitely will want to draft if you can get him because he does touch the ball a whole lot. And when he's healthy and he's out there, then it is very hard to stop him. So the PPR is just going to add up. And with touchdowns as well, this is another player that they are glad is is healthy, healthy, and ready to roll. I see a lot of touchdowns coming for Philly Goddard this year. They better utilize their tight end. Tight end is usually the quarterback's best friend. I like how you brought that up. He did only play in 14 games last year, but in those 14 games that he started in, in those 14 games, he was targeted 83 times. So he is a high target for quarterback Jalen Hurts in Philly. Uh, he finished the season with 59 receptions, 592 yards, uh, and three touchdowns just on last season. Uh, and and it's, it's not it wasn't a bad I don't think it was a bad season for him again uh you're looking to get that 2021 season he never played for Dallas he only played for Philly I don't know where I got the Dallas stuff from I don't know I felt like there was a Dallas Cowboy tight end that got traded to Philly I, I don't know why I'm thinking that so I'm, I'm probably off it can't be him or yeah can't be him it's not Dallas Goddard so um you got dallas goddard here he's our number 10 tight end apologize to the philadelphia eagle fans because i just thought he was uh, i could have swore he played for dallas at one point <laughs> but i'm wrong and no apology to the dallas cowboy fans you wish you had yourself a dallas goddard all right you wish it did uh but yeah he's our number 10 uh and we'll keep it moving at number nine from cleveland browns david and joku David Njoku, what you got to say about this fella right here? David Njoku is just one of those tight ends that is always going to be a sure bet. It doesn't matter who is in this Browns offense. He is going to find a way to make himself known, which means that he's going to find a way to get that ball in his hand and to be productive with it. 
he is a a beast and is able to do so many awesome things within this offense, especially when it comes to touchdowns. He himself has said before that he tries every time he gets the ball in his hand to get a touchdown. <laughs> so definitely one of those Mr. Sure people that you, if you get the chance to draft, that's exactly who you should draft. Since you're talking about touchdowns, he finished the 2023 season, which was his best season in Cleveland, and he's going into year eight in Cleveland with six touchdowns. He had 882 yards off of 81 receptions. Wait a minute. So he had 81 receptions. Peachy, can you guess the number of targets he had in Cleveland? Can you just guess? Oh, well, if if he had all those receptions, it would have to be over 100 at least. Give me a guess. Don't give me no estimate. Okay. Just give me a guess. Um, 115. He had 123 targets. Oh, yep. Gosh, Lee. This is the <laughs> man. He's number nine on our list. And I feel like you could get him. You could, Listen, if you don't draft one of the top tier tight ends in this draft, it's okay. Because you're going to get good value later in the draft. Round six, round seven, round eight. Probably where David and Joku will go, Dallas Goddard, those guys like that. So don't feel like you need to draft a tight end super early, okay? You're going to be able to get tight end value a little bit later in the draft. Number seven, we got Dalton Kincaid out of the Buffalo Bills. Okay, Buffalo is dealing with a ton of of injuries right now on the offense and the defense but we're talking the offense right now i think kincaid is going to have a monster season because if you remember they may have you know like a couple of wide receivers but one of their wide receivers is really banged up really bad they don't know when he's coming back then you have the key on coleman that means that the defenses are going to be focused on the, the few receivers that they do have, that's going to leave Kincaid open to be able to do a lot of productive work in this offense. So I, I, I think Kincaid could actually wind up being closer to the top by the time it's all said and done. But if you have a chance to draft Kincaid, because I'm telling you, he's going to have the ball in his hands. He's going to be targeted a whole lot. In, in this offense this year, even more than he was before. With the Buffalo offense with Stephon Diggs, he was targeted 91 times. So if he was targeted 91 times with Stephon Diggs and they don't have any wide receiver that compares to a Stephon Diggs this year, that number might go up to the 123, 130, whatever, like Peachy said. He had 73 receptions for 673 yards and two touchdowns last season. This is why Dalton Kincaid from the Buffalo Bills is our number seven. Number six, my man. Evan Ingram. Now, I know he played for the Giants. Now, don't try to tell me he ain't play for a New York team before he found heaven in Jacksonville. But Evan Ingram out of Jacksonville. Talk about my man, Evan. Evan Ingram. Yes, he played for the Giants. And he, he was quite productive for the Giants, too. I feel like in this Jacksonville offense, I think Ingram is going to have a big year. I'm very, very excited about these tight ends this year because I'm I'm looking at the Jags offense and I feel like that they're going to be you know trying to um get at Christian Kirk and people like that and things like that I feel like that Ingram is going to have a lot of targets I feel like Trevor Lawrence is going to hit him a lot and I'm in a lot of times, even in New York, when he played in New York, he would always, it seemed like he would always find his way like right beside the end zone. That way, whenever, you know, he would um, receive the ball, he was usually like right there by the end zone. So I think that Evan is going to have a really fantastic year. So if you have a chance to draft a tight end and you miss out on these top ones, you definitely need to draft Evan Ingram. In this PPR league, Evan Ingram has to get drafted. 
Uh, PG talked about they lost Calvin Ridley. They did draft Brian Thomas Jr. He's a rookie. Uh, they still have Christian Kirk. He's still the main guy out there. But at this point, Evan Ingram is a wide receiver playing tight end. He is a wide receiver. What, why do I say that? This guy had 143 targets and 114 receptions for almost 1,000 yards, 963 yards. He had four receiving touchdowns. Evan Ingram, some people may reach. I don't think you have to reach on Evan Ingram, Peachy. I don't think you have to reach on him. But if he's there, smack you in the face in round five, round six, you might want to, and you don't have a tight end yet, you might want to go ahead, snatch him up. He's going to get the targets, like Peachy said. Evan Ingram out of Jacksonville. Good golly, O'Malley. He might have the most targets as a tight end in the NFL when we get through this list, now that I think about it. All right, now listen, this is a caution pick. Uh, the, the injury reports are saying that TJ Hawkinson may not be available to midseason or what, but pay attention to what's going on out there in the injury world. We'll try to keep you updated here on the show. But Minnesota Vikings, TJ Hawkinson is our number six, I believe, tight end. Uh, PG, talk a little bit about why he needs to be drafted. Okay, so first of all, even if TJ Hawkinson may not play but half a season or whatever, he is a good stash piece that you need to, to keep available because – if this team is is going to where they would like to go to, that means that when he comes back, he's going to be deadly. Anytime Hawkinson's on the field, he's going to be deadly. He's done this, um, but like for years, <laughs> and he is always a great fantasy piece. So don't just just because some of these players may not be healthy now and they may not be starting this season. It's a long fantasy season, guys. So if you're able to get some of these guys and just stash them, that is that's definitely one that you would definitely want to do that for. Very well said. Um, due to the injury, he's not going to be drafted high. If he was, right. it wasn't injured. He's probably a top five, definitely a top ten um tight end tj hawkinson last year had to de he dealt with some injuries but uh he finished the season with 95 receptions off of 127 targets that was kirk cousins go-to guy even with a team with justin jefferson and the rookie jordan addison so he played 15 games last year he it did get injured toward the end of the season again he finished with 960 yards and five touchdowns Peachy said you can get him, you can stash him, so get him and stash him. Listen to what Peachy says. All right, we get down to number five. This is my guy. This is kind of like a guy that I really like, kid. Trey McBride out of Arizona. Anything you want to say about young Trey? <laughs> <laughs> I love this kid. I'm excited for this kid. I just don't like it because he plays for our rival Cardinals. But <laughs> fantasy-wise... Oh, he's a must get because he he is very dominant. If he can get the ball in his hands, then he is going to be super deadly. So I'm I'm very, very excited to see what McBride's got going on this year. There is there is a new element there, of course. You know, um Marvin Harrison Jr.'s there. Oh, it's hard for me to say that name. Excuse me, just yeah, a cardinal, but <laughs> Kyler Murray's back. There's a lot of fun, exciting things going on in Arizona right now. I feel like that McBride is going to get the ball a whole lot. I feel like that a lot of these defenses are going to be centered on Harrison and things like that. And that's going to free up McBride to be able to catch some of these awesome Kyler Murray throws. So. Yeah, we'll see what the synergy is like with his with his quarterback, Kyler Murray. Right. But again, last year, played 17 games, targeted 106 times, 81 receptions, 825 yards, three touchdowns. Trey McBride is creeping his way up as to one of the premier 
tight ends in the league and he's going into year three and usually year three is when you kind of really like set the tone and your mark on the nfl it's a possibility he could be an all pro or some a pro bowl tight end coming out of the nfc so we'll see what happens trey mcbride at number five number four are we talking about the all pro the one and only george kittle from san francisco peachy give us a little bit about why you're why you're drafting george kittle the reason why that you're drafting George Kittle is because he is a very versatile tight end. There are so many things that he can do in this offense. Let me tell you, if if Kittle has the kind of year that he had a few years ago, if he can wind back time, I believe it was 2019 when he had this huge dominant year, I feel like that he could wind up becoming Brock Purdy's best friend. And I feel like that Kittle could have a lot of touchdowns and I feel more targets because of some some past things that happened last year. I feel like he's going to be targeted a whole lot more. So he's going to have a lot more opportunities to have the ball in his hands to be able to show people why he's still one of the best tight ends in the National Football League. After being featured on a show called Receiver, he better get the ball a lot of hell a lot more. I tell you what, though, he definitely put up a really good season in 2023. You were talking about that 2018 year where he just went ball. That was the first time he made all pro where he finished with 88 receptions off 136 targets, 1,377 yards with five touchdowns. But 2019, that year was no slouch either because he was back-to-back 1,000-yard receiving uh seasons uh, 177 targets his targets went down as the team continued to they, they added Debo Samuel that year they added other pass catchers that year so his targets went down just a little bit but he did finish with a thousand yards and last year was his third 1,000 yard year uh season where he finished with 90 targets 65 receptions for 1,020 yards with six touchdowns and here's what's funny in 2022 when he didn't have a thousand yards, he had eleven touchdowns. So George Kittle is gonna probably average, a probably I would say between sixty to hopefully what was the highest sixty to maybe ninety receptions uh, this season. It's gonna be and that's a big number, but depending on how the 49ers tend to feature him, this is a guy you want to get picked up. He's not our top tight end. But he slid down to number four, and you'll see why. You know the 49ers are loaded with weapons. And the good news is you can get a top-tier tight end like George Kittle probably a little bit later on in the draft, depending on how your draft falls. So keep George Kittle in mind. We're going to Baltimore. Number three, Mark Andrews, who was in a motorcycle accident just recently. But I believe he'll be good to go football season. He's coming off the ACL injury. And why is he number three, PG? Like, why Mark Andrews? Mark Andrews, first of all, he is okay. Uh, He was not hurt in that, you know, because he was already hurt from the ACL, but him and his passengers were just fine. There was no one hurt, so we are thankful for that. Whenever he is healthy, this (laughs) dude is one of Lamar Jackson's favorite targets. Like, he gets targeted a whole, whole lot. That's why he's number three. Could probably be number two because he is – Lamar Jackson targets him a lot. Everyone knows Baltimore, the one thing that that a a lot of times they don't really have that do that great of a job in the offense is receivers. So, Jackson and Andrews are like – just made for each other and and every time that that ball comes out a lot of times you're looking at andrews because he's usually got the ball in his hands scoring touchdowns doing everything so very very excited about to see what andrews is going to do this year when it comes to fantasy mark andrews makes the ball tomorrow Ravens offense just so much more fluid uh, that that I, I can't sum it up and here's how Peachy was talking about that one year where he had over a thousand yards that was in 2021 his only season uh, he had over a thousand yards but he was targeted 153 times that year on 107 receptions 
2022, 113 targets, 73 receptions. And then 2023 is when he got injured towards ACL. But he was targeted 61 times, 45 receptions, had 544 yards. You know what? He had six touchdowns that year in a short season. He already had six. So the offense definitely shifted once he got injured. Lamar had to find other ways to win. They don't really have a running game. They now have a running game. So... This is going to be interesting. Make sure he's your number three tight end. This is a guy you want to get, I would say, late first round. If you're looking to draft the tight end first with the PPR, you know he's going to get the receptions. Early second round, there's there's three tight ends you might want to pick up early. And then the rest you can try to look for uh, as of in value. All right, man, we're almost there. We're at our number two tight end. He's going into a sophomore season in Detroit. Uh, last year's rookie, Sam Laporta. Peachy. Take us away. Wow. Sam Laporta had a really, really good season last year. Sam Laporta in year two, I expect for him to have even a better season this year. The, he definitely gets his share of targets, the lion's share of, <laughs> of the targets from Jared Goff. That's his security blanket. And when all else fails, when St. Brown is being defended and, you know, in, in the, um, can't remember the other receiver name there, but when, when they're being defended, he's, he finds his way always open, <laughs> but he is, he's spectacular. Definitely is a top tight end. You get him, you're going to get him because there's actually some drafts where he's first. So it's very exciting with Laporta. I feel he's going to have a huge fantasy year this year. This is Jared Goff's guy. Mm -hmm. 120 targets, 86 receptions, 889 yards, and here's the number, 10 touchdowns. Sam Laporta. And he had a rush attempt out of the backfield for four yards. So if you get 10 yards, it's a whole extra point. Listen, PPR, this is your number two tight end. Now, some people may say he should be number one, and I can dig it. So our number one tight end, our number one tight end is Peachy's guy. My guy was four. Peachy chose this guy, Travis Kelsey, from the Kansas City Chiefs. Why would you pick him as number one, Peachy? Because every quarterback has a best friend on these teams. And Travis Kelsey is Pat Mahomes' best friend. Whenever every anything breaks down, if anything breaks down and something doesn't go the way that he thinks it, I does finds number eighty-seven. And speaking of of which, the receiver Travis Kelsey might as well be a wide receiver because that's that's kind of how he plays in this Chiefs offense. He always has, and I'm telling you. The targets, like he always looks for Kelsey. So you know, getting well that Mahomes and Kelsey are gonna have that chemistry, of course, that they've had for so long. And you just have to get him first. Like he just has to be the first tight end pick off the any the drafts already have him on their boards at number one. I'm telling you, when you get your tight end, the first one has got to be Kelsey. He's the man. I'll leave it at that. Played in 15 games last year, 121 targets. He had 93 receptions for 984 yards with five touchdowns. Slow start to the season for Travis Kelsey last year. He did miss two games with little injuries. But, um, you know, it looks like Mahomes is healthy. If Mahomes is healthy, Kelsey is healthy. That's a deadly combination. You might want to try to match them up, get both of them on your team. But he's got to be the number one tight end because he's the one that's targeted. If you're looking for a guy that's going to probably get you more of the touchdown, then maybe you go Sam Laporta. He seems to be really featured. But uh, we got our man Travis Kelsey as the number one tight end in the What's Your Fantasy Top 10 Tight Ends of 2024. So listen, do us a favor. Make sure you check out the other videos up there. We got our top 10 wide receivers and our top 10 running backs. Make sure you check them out. Leave a comment in the comment section. Let us know what you guys think about our top 10 tight ends. Do you guys have anybody else that you feel 
should be in the top 10 or should we take any of our guys and shift them around we love your appreciate your feedback your comments as well and until the next time keep your fantasy going on what's your fantasy football and we can't wait to talk to you guys again next week thanks for watching